Okay, so here's my next project. I got uh, a whole bunch of hydraulic parts at an auction a few years ago. This is a really good motor here. And then a pressure relief valve and a pressure uh, gauge itself. This is a, I think an 11 horsepower snowmobile engine that I got on a trade-in for a welder. Then this is a pump, a two-stitch pump I bought at Princess Auto. Here's a big filter. This one here is uh, the mount for the motor between the motor and the, the Lovejoy couplers here. And as you can see, I got a whole bunch more parts back there that I don't know what to do with. So anyway, so I'm starting to um, design the hydraulic power pack that I want to build because this motor is going to turn into a hydraulic post hole auger. Then I'm going to make a quick attachment for my uh, Kubota. But the first thing I need to do is I'm going to have to make a hydraulic oil tank. So this is a 4x4 four four foot sheet of 8 inch steel that I just bought at the local um, metal supplier. And uh, they had it uh, lying around so I got a really good deal and I know the guy that works there. So I paid $45 for that sheet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it up. So as I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted by my uh, trusty little shop heater and heat exchanger which by the way I did a video on uh, as well you can look it up on my YouTube channel um, I want to build a tank so this is kind of the general idea um, I'm gonna have the tank down below I'll probably put a couple of wheels on it and then the suction pump into the pump which is connected to the engine pressure gauge pressure relief and then uh, the, uh, the, uh, the spool valve and then a filter back into the tank but the tank I looked at them they're like three hundred dollars and in Princess Auto so, I got me this 4x4 sheet of 8 inch material, and this is how I'm going to cut it up into two pieces. One that's 48 by 16, and one that is, uh, let me see now, 12, 24, 30, 40 by 24. And then I'll have a piece left over and a piece left over out of the sheet. And then I'm going to bend it at 90 degrees here and here, and here and here. So I'll have two pieces, and then this one will rotate like this. And oh, it's bloody! Okay, so the first part is done. It's cut and bent, and now I'm gonna have to do the shell that goes up and over and back down on the back. So the reason I cut these pieces, these slots in here. I left uh, some one inch gaps here and here and here and over there. It's because this is one eighth inch material and my little press is not strong enough to bend this. So what I did is I just cut it and left some sort of a little bit of a hinge here. So I have four inches in total of one eighth inch material and that I can bend by hand just by clamping it down and then I'm just gonna have to weld it up again um, the other option would have been to bring it to a machine shop and it would have cost another maybe 30 40 dollars more to get that all bent and for the amount of time that it took me to cut these slots and then it'll take me to weld it up again I probably barely could have driven there to the shop and back and pick it up again the next day and back so that's how I decided to do it and uh, it seems to work quite well. Okay, so I should be able to take these two pieces and slide them into each other. <laughs> I can love. So this turned out really good actually. So I'm just going to clamp it together here and tack weld it. Then up here probably uh, use a hammer 
just kind of or maybe a, a grinder and just kind of grind this out a little bit and then weld along the top and this looks really good so this box here is 12 inches high 16 inches wide and two feet long and according to my calculations if I put in 15 gallons of uh, hydraulic fluid that should bring it pretty close to the top not entirely but almost full so I think that'll do for my purposes and then that uh, engine is gonna sit on top with the pump and everything so yeah this actually turned out really well all right so I got this uh, pump and the filter and the relief valve and everything put together and the plan is to obviously this is gonna have to be lifted up to uh, join into the Lovejoy coupler there but I have um, the oil coming out of the filter and needs to have an elbow to go back down into the tank and because I have some put this down this is what it looks like on the side so this is where the import like the this is going to go back to the tank and this is where the high pressure oil will come out so what I need to do is uh, I have to find an elbow and I can buy them they're about 10 15 bucks but I have one actually here that's just a, a f I think it's a flat face ORB ring, um, but it's too big and I want to be able to put a, a hose on here. So I wanted to kind of turn this outside diameter down to a one inch and uh, I was not able to really properly hold this in my four jaw chuck because it's fairly small and I just don't have enough surface to grab onto it. So what I decided to do, I'm going to turn a piece of metal that will fit right in here and I'm going to weld it and I can flip it around and stick a little piece of metal sticking out like a rod. I can put that in my three jaw chuck and then I can turn this one down and I'll just grind the um, the welds back off. It doesn't really have to be anything precise. I just have to put a hose across and then use a hose clamp to clamp this down. So I think that's going to work. I'll uh, bring you back when I'm done with that. So here's the piece of metal that I used just from a spare piece of metal. It comes right out. Put that in here. So now I'm going to tack weld it along the sides. That should hold it enough to turn it down. So there's the piece, weld it together. Now I can chuck it up and turn it down. Okay, so this is what it looks like. I made a little bridge here. So now I can just put the hose over top and put a hose clamp on here. This is low pressure anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And. Uh, just saved myself another 20 bucks. So I'm working on the motor mount so that I can uh, connect the engine with the uh, oil pump. And I made up two flanges. Now for the oil pump part, it was quite easy. I just take this and I slide it on until it fits. There you go. And then I can just trace the holes through the back. See, there's the holes for the screws. And so that's what I did. I made the little markings here. Now for this part, it's a little bit trickier because I can't go from behind and uh, push and make the mark uh, on this piece of uh, metal. So what I did is a little trick that I learned. If you take some uh, actual set screws, ones that look just like this, the right size and you put them in um, backwards you can see that they actually have let's see if this camera will focus or not they have actually a bit of a sharp edge a sharp circle right there so then what you can do is you can take this and hold it where you want it just so it's exactly centered and then hit it with a hammer lightly I mean obviously not too much because it's a an aluminum engine behind it and then this sharp little ridge will make an imprint on the back side and then you can drill the hole so I did that with one hole and uh, held it into the the set screw that was sticking out then I did the other one the next one and the fourth one and so now, now I have a perfectly fitting and you can see it just wiggles a little bit and now I'm gonna be able to work on the uh, 
the legs that come out that will then hold this part which will screw into here and that's how I'm going to be able to mount this whole thing on the engine. So anyways, so the set screws in backwards, that, uh, that has helped me out a few times. I hope it's going to help someone else. So what I want to do here is I want to take these three pieces and weld them to the bottom plate. So like this and like that. And the third one goes here. And so this bottom plate gets screwed onto my engine and this smaller one gets screwed onto my pump and I have to have five inches between here and there. So because I want to make sure that I can align them properly, what I did is I grabbed a piece of round stock. Let's see if I can get this off here. There. And I turned it down to the di diameter of the bigger plate right there. And I turned the smaller one down to the diameter of the smaller piece. So now I can set them in and I'll have both. There we go. So now I have the centers of the holes of the big plate perfectly aligned with the center of the hole of the small plate. And so now I'm going to be able to put these against the bottom right there all the way around and clamp them and then weld them so I know that the bottom is perfectly aligned with what the top should be. And then I'm going to raise this one up and I'm going to weld it in between the three pieces there and I'll know that the spacing is going to be correct and if not I'll bend it in or out a little bit this way or that way and I know that it'll be aligned properly. Uh, see how that works. I'll set it up and I'll start tacking and I'll bring you back when that's done. So here's the piece that I welded um, solidly now on both sides. Then what I did is uh, I used a precision square. And I made sure that this piece is perfectly square and this piece is perfectly square. And then down here and over, this is perfectly square. So now what I'm going to do is I put it in my lathe and I'm going to um, turn the ends off here and make them perfectly parallel to this. So then what I can do is take the smaller piece and weld it in here and it should be perfectly parallel if I align it with these because they will be perfectly parallel with the bottom here. And then I should be able to paint it and uh, then that'll be done. So here's the contraption I built to weld it. The top is welded to the sides and I clamped those down to the welding table. I uh, use the stone just to make sure there's no little burrs and you can see like they're sitting right on the welding table. There's no gap whatsoever. So then I took that little adapter I made last time right there and I flipped it backwards upside down and uh, used a clamp to clamp this piece all the way down. So this one and this one is completely perfectly clamped down onto my welding table so I should be able to weld it and weld it through here and back there and uh, get that all perfectly parallel here and here and then I'll, I'll put it back on the lathe and see how accurate it is but it should be within a couple of thousands and that's most certainly good enough uh, because the Lovejoy coupler has a good amount of play in there. All right so here's the beast. I got this thing all welded up and bolted and it fits. It's not too pretty. I'm going to probably grind off these corners here with the angle grinder and paint it nicely. And so this is fully accessible down below to put the uh, Lovejoy couplers in and it's tightened and uh, it looks pretty good. I'm happy with the way that this turned out. Now this would have been about 50 or $60. The issue wasn't so much the money. I mean it adds up too, right? But um, I couldn't find one that had this proper spacing on one side and then on the other side with the proper distance because this is no blower engine, not uh, something you would normally use for a power pack. But uh, anyway, so this probably took me two or three hours to make and uh, it was fun to do. I'm going to paint it, put it back on. That should look pretty nice. All right, so here's the bracket, freshly painted. I'm not sure how well this is going to show up on the camera, but uh, I think it 
It's gonna look really nice when that's all done. All right, so here's a quick update. I installed the mount after I painted it. And then I created a pipe. It's gonna go into the tank. That's the suction. And uh, I have about an inch and a quarter of a gap. And so I'm gonna weld that down. Right now it's just, it's just sitting here. Um, it's gonna have a little rubber hose from here to there with some clamps. Then I created this um, access hatch. Right now this is just, just sitting here. Um, so in case I ever have to go into uh, the tank, you'll see I have some of these self-tapping screws. All I need to do is put a little bit of a gasket around the edge, but I don't have that with me right now. So the last thing I gotta do is I gotta have the return hose that goes from the filter back into the tank. And uh, what I did is I created another uh, pipe here. I didn't have the right diameter. This is a little bit over a uh, an inch. So what I did is I created a little ridge so that if I put the pipe clamp here, that it's not gonna slide over and out. But anyways, I only had a little bit left. So I took a bit of a bigger piece and I cut it at an angle. And I saw that on line two, so that if the oil comes down, um, the return oil, it'll go to the right and uh, away from where the, uh, the suction pipe is. That's just gonna prevent a little bit of extra uh, turbulence and air bubbles uh, from getting back in the pump. And then I have a big fat magnet here that I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that one underneath the pipe and stick it against the, uh, the bottom. Uh, so any, uh, any metal filings and stuff that are suspended in the, uh, in the tank uh, maybe they flake off or whatever um, before they go into the suction back up into the pump there's another extra step that it can uh, it can suck them against the magnet here and periodically i might open this hole and take the magnet out and clean it but i don't think that's going to be too much of an issue so anyways so i'm going to take that pipe over there and uh, see where i want to um where i want to have the return line come in i'm thinking somewhere in that area here but I'll play around with it and see what would be easiest because I still want to have access, decent access to fill in uh, the oil. Then I think I'm going to put the handle over here and the wheels over there. I'm not quite sure yet, but anyways, this is what it looks like so far. And uh, yeah, I think it's coming along. I'm getting there. Almost, almost done. All right, so the pipes are welded in and uh, that turned out quite nicely actually. Here's the suction pipe, which will go down there. And then this is the return back to the tank. You can see the angle there. So now I got this piece here bent up, which will go underneath it and on the sides. I'm gonna set this up and tack weld it together, make sure it's nice and square. And I'll bring you back when I'm ready. Okay, so I got the edges welded and uh, that actually didn't turn out too bad. Once I paint it, I'm going to wire brush it and then clean it a little bit and paint it. And uh, these uh, welds are going to look really nice. So this is what it looks like now. And I'm ready to uh, weld the last piece, this uh, C channel, and then the wheels and the handle. And then I should be able to paint it. Okay, so the next thing is I have to. Uh, create the axles for these little wheels. I bought them at Princess Auto. I think they were on sale for 20 bucks or something like that. And they're solid rubber, so I can drive over metal and they're not gonna go flat because this is most likely gonna sit around for quite some time without being used. So I don't want the, I don't want the tires to go flat. So anyway, so what I got is a, a seven inch piece of one inch stock. And I'm just gonna turn it down to three quarters for 2.75 inches, drill a hole through it, and then I can put a washer with a little uh, clouse pin through there. And uh, that should be pretty simple.
I could have tested it, um, but I decided to uh, to take my chances. And when I have everything together, I'll probably uh, put a little bit of air pressure on the inside and uh, use some soap water, see if I have any bubbles. Down below anyways, up on top, I don't care. But anyways, it's looking a lot nicer now. Can't wait to put the wheels on and start her up. All right, so the beast is finished. And uh, as you can tell, I made a bit of a mess there. There's one uh, fitting that I hadn't tightened up properly. It was this one right here. So I ended up having to take the filter off to get access to tighten this. And uh, it's been working great now. So I put all the hoses together. And uh, then I have two eight foot hoses that I brought over here to my uh, torque um, guard. I think it's called torque guard motor. It's from Parker. It's a pretty heavy duty beast. That's what's gonna power the auger for my uh, post hole digger. But uh, yeah, got the hoses all crimped. So this here is the supply, it goes into the valve, and then the return goes back over here, and then this is where it goes through the filter back down into the tank. Um, one thing I noticed is that the engine vibrates quite a bit, so I think I'm going to probably have to put some sort of a, maybe a couple of rubber stopper feet down here at the bottom there, uh, just to keep it from vibrating. Not quite sure what I'm going to do yet. It doesn't really matter if you're standing outside or on grass or something, but uh, yeah, so that's what it looks like. And uh, it's uh, definitely been a bit more expensive than I had originally planned. I figured it'd be about 500 bucks for everything, and uh, it worked out to be closer to $800. Um, but again, I mean, considering that it would cost me about 2500 bucks to buy one of those for $800, that's not too bad. Not only that, um, I need to pull, uh, dig some holes there next year and that would cost me about $300 and uh, if I hired somebody. So now with this one, gonna be the auger, I'll be able to do it myself. And uh, so I save 300 bucks, do a couple of jobs like that and uh, this will pay for itself.